Well, hello and welcome to Art Biz TV. In this episode, I'm talking with the lovely Jackie Peach, and we're talking all about her art workshop success story. Yes, Jackie is not only a really well-known artist, but she's also a teacher as well. And if you've been interested in how to set up a successful workshop business and you'd like some of her secret tips and tricks, then this is something that we're covering in this interview. But I also talked to Jackie a lot about her story, like where did she start out and how did she get to where she is today. So I hope you really enjoy it. If you want to know, of course, all the details of how to find out about the workshops that she runs or all the other, you know, socials and the usual things, there will be links below this video to Jackie's website, her social media, where you can find out more about her. But in the meantime, I think we should watch the interview, don't you? Let's go ahead and dive in. All right. Hello and a really warm welcome to this interview. Today, I've got the lovely Jackie Peach in her beautifully lit studio um, and we're both in Perth today and today we're really talking about your artist journey so I guess we're going to start at the very beginning have you always wanted to be an artist Jackie? Yes I really did um, but I wasn't naturally gifted with drawing and so when I announced to my parents that I wanted to go to art school they were sort of like, oh, no, you have to do something sensible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I went to business college and I suffered it for a year, got really good marks, got a fabulous job at UWA, yeah. saved every single cent. And then really I took off travelling for probably 15 years all around oh, Australia, wow. New Zealand, the Mediterranean, Europe, um, Ireland, all over the place. So I just sort of put my art on the back burner thinking, well, I'm, I'm no good. I can't do that. And then, you know, you get married and have children. And, but I finally reached a point where I could make whatever choice I wanted to. Um, the family yeah. were grown and independent. And I was at a stage where I thought, this is it. I'm going to art classes. Wow. And um, so it's not even that long ago. It was probably about wow. 14 years ago. Wow. Okay. That's an amazing, what, what a lot of travel in there. And all that travel, I guess, has probably informed your art, has it, looking at the, the work behind you on the wall? Absolutely. Yes. And the colours and the feeling of different countries, you know. And when I start a painting, quite often something totally unexpected all end up coming out. So, yeah. And do you awesome. find that you, you're still drawing inspiration from those travel days? Did that sort of, has that cut still come through? Absolutely. I you love it. Those, I love um, it. Okay. Yeah. But well, it, while, while we're talking about this, tell us a bit more about your art. I know we're primarily talking about the workshops, but before we got on and started recording, you told us, you told me something that you were changing focus a little bit or to just tell us a little bit about your own art and where that's at at the moment. Um, yes, well, you know, we all need to make money. So um, my art workshops are going really well and all the other things are going really well. But, um, you know, the, my actual art has been a little bit on the back burner. And so I've just really decided to take the plunge and hire a wall in a gallery and yeah. really just go for it next year. So it's financially, it's quite a big outlay. But if we don't jump in and take that leap of faith, you never know. That's right. And I wonder how many people watching are sitting there going, oh, my goodness, me. You know, it, it does come down to that. Sometimes at the end of the day, you just have to go, I just, I have to get out there and see, you know, I have to just, I have to just take a punt. Now, I can see behind me again on that wall, and I know a little bit about what you do, but tell everybody else, you know, you're growing up on the beach. Uh, has that informed the work? How has that informed the work? And how has the work changed over the years? Um, to start off with, I was doing traditional art classes and I right. started getting really stressed with it. So um, I asked the teacher if she could show me how to do outer space. I wanted to do a nebula, you know, the birth of a star. Yeah. And so that was my very first paint pour. And that totally captivated wow. me. And because paint pouring is so liquid, it then was just the perfect tool for me to um, express my love of the ocean. So all the blues, wow. turquoises and... Um, all those gorgeous colours. Yeah. And when so, you... Let's just get technical with the paint pouring because 
because this is not something I do. So um, tell us what, what is paint pouring? Like, what do you use? What type of paints? Like, how does it work, actually? Uh, when I started, there was very little that anybody yeah. ever knew about paint pouring and there was nothing on um, YouTube or Pinterest or any of those sites. Yeah. Um, and it was purely for me at that stage, oil paint and turps. But of course, that's very toxic. Yeah. Um, I was painting outside, middle of winter, middle of summer. <laughs> um, so yes, and then I decided that I would give acrylics a go. And I started with acrylic paint and water. That's okay. It. And it does it work the same way? Like, and, and so how do you start it? Just tell us how you, you know, you, and it's on board, on canvas, like. Um, you can do it on anything. I've seen yeah. people do it on aluminium, on timber, so long as it, the products are primed, you yeah. can do it on anything. But I personally use canvas. Um, and it, it, the paint needs to be thinned down. So it's kind of like pouring cream out of the carton. So quite oh, yeah. fluid. Yeah. Um, and yeah. So the first paint pour is really interesting. And of course, you have to have a wet canvas for the yeah. paint to travel okay. across. Um, but yeah, if, if you're using a dark colored paint, like that beautiful um, ultramarine blue, yeah. pour it onto a wet canvas, it takes your breath away. It's just. <gasps> <laughs> wow, and do you so then you pour it on it? Do you control it or do you allow it to do its own thing? I really allow it to do its own thing, and I see a lot of people on the different tutorials that have this gorgeous image and it's developing beautifully, and then they pick it up and pour all the paint off it. And it's like, if only you'd waited. So you do need to be patient. Ah, you need to be patient. So the magic happens because i I've, I've, I'm a little bit much about it, but I've seen it gets poured, it gets tipped and bits come off it. And it's like, oh, okay, I couldn't quite. But now I'm talking to you, I'm like, oh, okay, so actually you need to, you do the pour, but then you wait. Yes, patience is the key. The other thing that's really, really hard is knowing when to stop. <laughs> Isn't that the case anyway? Oh my God, I have the same issue. I overpaint all the time. Okay, so how do you, how do you know when to stop? Um, I've learned through experience that um, yeah. sometimes it is a good idea to make sure that I have to actually go out and do something, um, you know, go to work or um, have other commitments where I have to leave the canvas. And I'm invariably very excited when I get home and run in as quickly as I can. And it changes so much through the course of it that, um, yeah, I, you're usually really thrilled to see what's happened. Wow, okay. If I go back in after it's dry, yeah. um, I put it up and I'll look at it for a few days until I see which way I think it needs to go. And you can pour over it again in different sections. And um, so most of my paintings have got like 20 hours of work in them because it's a layering um, thing where you slowly add and tweak. And but it's Right, oh, my God, okay, my mind's blown already because I think I... I like probably other people have just seen those awful YouTube videos where it's poor and tiff and I'm kind of like, I'm not really seeing it. But, you know, I look at the background and I'm like, well, how did you get those working? OK, yeah. so I'm pretty intrigued. So it came a trend. When did it sort of become a trend? Um, I think it was probably about eight years ago. And yeah. Or uh, there was, somebody had added blow medium into the paint, which makes it very um, creamy and silky and all sorts of cells and things appear. Uh, but the market just became saturated with it. Yeah. You know, there was just so much of it. But, wow, um, uh, was, was, it, was that how you got into the teaching? Did you, did you start teaching that or the teaching has nothing to do with the paint pouring? Like how did you, um, how did you move from doing to, to teaching? I was doing an exhibition at the Rockingham Arts Centre um, several years ago and there are a lot of artists in that area and um, lots of people kept saying to me, how do you get that look? Um, <laughs> what have you done? And my niece, who's an entrepreneur, actually said to me, you should be doing workshops. And right. I said to her, there's no way I can teach. And she said, how do you know? Have you ever tried? And so to cut a long story short, I did a few different workshops myself and kind yeah. of figured out what people expected and 
Um, there are a few that I went to that were exceptional, that set a very high benchmark and then others that were really disappointed, not, uh, disappointing. And I thought, well, that's exactly what I don't want to do. Yeah, and so yeah. from that, I did um, a lot of work to get my very first workshop happening, but I only invited friends. So cool. I supplied yeah. everything. Yep. And I said, you know, like this is, we'll pretend that we don't know each other and I need your honest feedback at the end wow. of the workshop, which I got. Yeah. And um, from there, I then um, met people such as yourself who gave me unlimited information on what avenues to take. And I then ended up going to Sydney for a five-day business course for entrepreneurs. Nice. Um, and I just did as much research as I possibly could so that I could launch something that was professional. So, See, this um, is really interesting, isn't it? Because I think, you know, that the idea of, I, well, I could just go and teach a workshop. And I love the fact that you, you've really taken it all professionally from the get-go. You've done your research first. What do I like? What do I not like? And how can I how can I reach that top level? How can my workshop be the best? That's so important. It's yeah. so important. I love all of that. Yes, yeah. keep telling us more. How did you start to fill? So once you've got your friends, once the friends, you're just a wonderful friend. <laughs> I love that. Pretend we don't know each other. <laughs> That's yes. brilliant. And yes. they gave you feedback and then presumably you tweaked and changed or whatever. And then how did yes. you fill your first public workshops? Like what did you do? Um, Facebook advertising. Yeah. 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 So um, I did a campaign and I sort of um, started, it was probably, it's hard to remember now, it's a long time ago, but I think it was about a month before I wanted to actually have that first workshop. Yeah. So I had plenty of lead time and I did it as an event. Um, yeah. yeah. And then um, I was overwhelmed with, because it was such a bad at the time as well. Oh, and I also had my website up. Yes. So they could go and see you know, your work and website. other works, other workshops. Yeah. And how many workshops were you doing at that point? Two a week, one on either Saturday or Sunday and one on a Wednesday. And same um, workshop? Yes. Yeah. A three hour intro. And then from that, I was also learning in my own practice and a lot of people were asking me about adding texture and all that sort of thing. So yeah. then that became like an intermediate workshop where after you'd done the intro, yeah. you could then come back, you know, go home and practice for a bit. And then if you had questions, come back to the second workshop where we really focused on texture and taking that intro to the next level. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then from that, it turned into a full day workshop. <laughs> where, yeah, as um, they do. yeah, where it was the intro and the textures, and that's actually really good value. And it's wow! Fun. And how often were you running those then? How often were the about the... once every month or every six weeks for a full day? Still pretty full on, isn't it? Considering your, you know, all the marketing and all the. Were you managing to balance the two things? were you still getting your own work done or was, did you find the workshops were taking most of your time the workshops were everything because I'd actually quit my full-time job to do it yeah <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was really focused I was scared I thought oh, I had a mortgage and it was like oh wow I've really this has to work there is no other option but see that that for me is super important isn't it because when you do that, and I did the same back in the day, I left my teaching job and it was like, I've got two kids to feed and a mortgage to pay. And mm. you do the things that you wouldn't normally do, isn't it? You do the uncomfortable tasks. Yeah, but it's worth it, isn't it? It's worth it. 100% yeah. worth it. 100%. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what what challenges did you have along the way as you built this? I mean, I imagine there must have been some challenges. Maybe not. Did I you think have the biggest challenge was that it had completely overtaken my life and my social life suffered for it. Yeah. And I think I was actually sort of becoming quite burnt out at one stage. Yeah. It is extremely rewarding when you see people's faces when they're creating their own art and loving what they're doing for the first time. Um, but I think I sort of became a bit obsessive about the whole thing. So... Um, so, uh, how long so give us a time like how long were you running it at that level how many uh, 
probably about two years. It's, that's a long time to be constantly delivering workshops, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so what, what did you do after that? What, what changes did you make after that? Um, I, I sort of relaxed into it finally. I, I realised that everything that I was doing, it was working and I didn't need to be spending every moment thinking about it. So if I did, um, if I had a regular routine and I had a good timetable that I followed, I found that I could actually fit a lot of other things into my life and still have successful workshop business running. And then so you, me... you reached that tipping point then it sounds. Do you, do you remember that moment um, where it was like, okay, it, this is working. I can start to spend less time on it. Do you remember how, at that moment? Not really. No, no. just, just yeah. came and because sometimes you're like, oh, it was a pivotal moment. And other times it was like, no, okay, we're, we're moving forward. Yeah. And for all those people who want to be as successful as you have been and still are with your workshops, if you were to go, you know that, if you were to go back to the beginning and, and do it again, like what advice would you give somebody starting out? What do you think your successes were? Um, I think um, speaking to people such as yourself um, that, um, you know, have all the knowledge and the information and, you know, like one of the first things you said to me was um, you really need to have a website set up and running so people can see who you are and what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and you, you've got to get all the foundation in place um, and also make sure that your um, actual workshop area is professional. So for me, it's in my home and my kitchen's attached to it. But yeah. when people come, all the personal things are put away. You know, there's, there isn't dirty dishes and and all that sort of stuff. It's really a professional studio that looks like a business yeah. Um, yeah. location. So have all the foundation in place before you actually launch. I think that's really good advice, isn't it? And if so, if somebody's wanting to start out, I mean, you are, you know, okay, you you were very lucky because what you ended up doing was really trending at the time, and I think that probably, you know, was was probably would have helped. So if somebody's somebody's wanting to do workshops now and they're not sure if what they're doing is on trend, but they've got something they're really good at. What would you suggest? Like, how would you suggest they started out? Um, maybe do the test run of a workshop yeah. um, and invite people that are attached to, um, you know, like your business group where you can actually invite a group of artists and say, this is, yeah, this is a trial and I need yeah. your honest feedback. Yeah. And do you know what? That's that sort of that's a bit of a mindset issue, isn't it? Because sometimes we don't want to hear the feedback, but actually it's the feedback that enables you to grow and improve. So you've yes. got to get past that as well. And, and getting people to be honest, like, don't try and protect my feelings. I need you to tell me honestly. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And and, you know, you, I can see that you've got that beautiful professional studio. And, of course, not everyone's as lucky as that. Sometimes you have to, to hire a venue. What would you be looking so if you didn't have that studio? What type of venue would you be looking for, do you think? Oh, there's quite a few, like, close to me. Um, yeah. There's, you know, like the lovely Victoria Park Art Centre, which is in a gorgeous old house. And it's, um, it's got a really good, if I have a really big group, it's fabulous because I can fit 14 people in there. Yeah. Um, but there are quite a few locations around Perth now um, in almost every suburb and also contacting your local council. Yeah, um, and seeing what they've got. Absolutely. So it shouldn't be, because yeah. I know sometimes people might be watching and thinking, oh, it's okay for you, Jackie, you've got your own beautiful studio. I haven't got that, but we mustn't put you off, right? If you haven't got a studio, you need to find somewhere that looks like that that you can hire locally. Yes, and I have done it for large groups. Um, I've yeah. done it through Belmont. Yeah. council um through uh the canning council so yeah there's lots of venue venues yeah 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 so when you say a large group so what's the normal like normally if you're running from home how many people do you normally have in there five and yeah. i've chosen um that especially because of the fact that i want people to have um step-by-step -step guidance um, yeah. I went to a workshop where there was probably about 18 people and the facilitator didn't even look at what I'd done. So 
So there was yeah. no, there was, you know, she just stood up and told us what to do. But it was, I was a bit disappointed because it's like, well, I yeah. need to ask you things. Absolutely. That's why you go to a workshop, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Rather than you could buy something online and not have any feedback. That's really good. That's really good to know, isn't it? So keeping the numbers low so that you can give your customer the best possible experience. Yeah. And let's talk about marketing because obviously, you know, Facebook ads of, you know, so if we if we took Facebook ads off the off the plate, if you had to start again the marketing from now, what do you what do you think you would be doing? What would be your strategy? Um, gosh, trying to I know I've my... thrown that at you a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> yes, but finding your target market without um, having those tools is quite difficult. There's Google Ads is brilliant. Yeah. Um, you need somebody to be really good at SEO, search engine optimization to get you yes. on the front page. Um, so that would be a, um, a really worthwhile outlay. Yeah. And I think, you know, Instagram ads on their own aren't too bad either. It's just Facebook is a little bit of a little bit of a in the mix at the moment. Um, but yeah, OK, so that's because I love it. So again, very, very professional right at the top. You're not trying any of the take forever free strategies that, you know, might work eventually. You've gone straight for this is this is how I'm going to fill the workshop. And it's so worth it, you know, if you yeah. bite the bullet and jump yeah. in and go, look, okay, I need to pay somebody that is good at getting me on the front page of Google, um, then, yeah, it really pays off. 100%. So I'm, I'm hearing a bit of a theme there, Jackie. <laughs> I'm hiring them all in the big gallery and I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to straight in there and, you know, so you definitely advocate that, that that's going to be the best route. If you're going to take this thing seriously, you're going to build an art business, you, you need to look at it professionally. Don't you? Go yes. straight in and, and do those things. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll drag it out for years and just feel disappointed and then it fizzles out and yeah. you've lost your dream. But, um, yeah, sometimes you do need to pay a little bit of money. But I also registered and got an ABN. So yeah. a lot of those things you can claim back on your tax as well. That's so, right. And you're running a business. So, you know, that's right. Once you get to that nice profitable bit, all those bits come off it. Yes. So I love it. It's, it's really, it's really good. It's really good. Um, okay. So what do you think overall has been the key to your workshop success? Like the one thing, what's the one thing do you think? Um, one to one tuition really you know that giving people that time and also there's no negative words in my workshop you know a lot of people come in and they say I can't look I can't paint I'm not creative I can't do this and I smile and say to them tell me that in three hours time and then you watch their face as you go through but it's that thing of encouragement and it is really scary if you've never painted before and you're going to a workshop, you think, am I going to make a fool of myself? Is my painting going to be horrible? It's just impossible for it to be horrible with paint pouring. So it's a really good start. <laughs> That's a good, yeah, that was that was a really good, a good topic, isn't it? But I think people need that encouragement and you know, people who have that perception, it's almost like they need to let you know just ahead. I'm gonna apologize ahead of time. I'm no, no, I'm no good, I can't do it, it's all that stuff, isn't it? And then so they're not only working away, walking away from your workshops with work, but they're also walking away with a confidence boost, you know, having discovered something about themselves. So it's a bit of a double whammy, isn't it, really? It is. It's, um, I get so much back from it. I've also learned a lot by the things that people do in workshops that um, because of the, you know, art classes I've done, I think there's certain things you can't do. Well, this is art. There's really nothing you can't do. And so I've seen people do things that I would never have dreamt of doing. Then when I see it, I go, oh, my goodness, I love that. So <laughs> I'll it's been do that. Expanding my horizons with art too. So that's a double whammy, isn't it? So, yeah. yeah. So, again, anyone who's thinking, oh, I'm not sure about workshops. I mean, I think, you know, there's, there's been some really good advice in here, Jackie. I'm so excited about it. And I think... The icing on the cake is that you you learn like you say you watch other people and you think oh that's I'm going to explore that what a great idea because it's yes. lots of minds isn't it in that room and, and um yeah. yeah so what's not to love what are the are there any downsides to doing workshops would you say apart from that burnout 
No, I love it. Yeah, I really do. I really enjoy it. And um, I think it, you know, it was where I was always meant to be um, doing something like this. Mm. And it's great to give back, you know, to people too. Um, yeah. And, it, you know, art can change lives, can't it? There's so Definitely. many people suffering from depression and anxiety from a health point of view. Um, I, do, I do 12 hours a week disability support care work. Oh, nice. And I've started advertising disability workshops and having quite a few adults come through yeah. that are in the NDIS scheme um, that are their lives are debilitated with anxiety and depression wow. and to see what happens to them when they come it's gorgeous wow so now there's a bit of a shift again isn't there I love it yeah do you That's think you'll gross. do more of that uh yes I've put it out there and um yeah wow how inspiring oh my goodness me thank you thank you for that I think I think people watching will be or pretty fired up, I think, and pretty excited about getting their own workshops. Now, oh, if they I want to so. find out more about you, where should they, you know, what are you offering at the moment and where should they go? Where should they, where would they find out more about you? Um, well, I've got my website, Perth <laughs> Artist Workshops, um, and then that explains the different classes and things that they can do. Yep. Um, I also do private workshops. So if anybody wants to do a one-on-one, -on -one, um, right. that's possible as well. And I also do mobile. So I've been out to places like Condinan and um, various towns um, and done workshops, which is fantastic. I love wow. that as well. Oh, wow. So obviously only within WA, <laughs> unless yeah. someone asks you. Unless, yeah. And do you, have, do you don't do anything online? Then you're just, you just do face-to-face, -face, no online? No, online. Um, I, I really like that personal contact. Yeah. Yeah. No, I am I'm totally with you. Okay. So I will make sure there'll be wherever you're watching this, there will be the link. And you're, of course, on the old social medias as well. Yes. Um, Perth Artist Workshops on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Okay. So I'll don't forget there will be links below, above, depending wherever you're watching this. So yeah. make sure to drop Jackie a message and just let her know that you've watched this and and what and what you think and how inspired. And if you're going to, you know, off the back of this, if you're going to start up workshops, then we'd both love to hear as well, I think. Cause, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, more workshops in the world, more face-to-face -face contact in this whole world of online stuff, more face-to-face -face stuff. And now we're coming out of this period, I think more and more of that can happen as well. So yes. Thank you so much for being with me today. I'm so excited. I feel like we could talk paint pouring for hours on end. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that might have to be something we do. Maybe we're going to have to catch up again once you've sold that wall um, at the gallery. So thank you yes. so much for, for being with me today. And um, take care. Thanks, Sophie.